Well, here we are at the Green Meadow Waller School in the Arrhythmia Room of all places. And we've just seen the, well, the, third, the second part of a three-part mystery drama. Okay. And maybe what we can do to start with is maybe you can share your name. My name is Gerald Carnell. Okay. And uh, maybe you can also tell me what you do. I'm a physician at the Fellowship Community in Spring Valley. Fellowship Community is a multi-generational care facility for the aged. We have co-workers, we have cows, we have sheep, we have chickens, and quite a few elderly. And an orchard. And an orchard. And uh, we try to have a lively community life. Uh -huh. Okay. And of course, um, my, my whole aim in asking you for this interview is um, because the young people uh, have, I mean, a big challenge to find their destiny nowadays. So uh, what I would like to, you to do is uh, perhaps tell me a little bit about how you found your path and where the big changes were, you know, things that really pushed you in a direction that most likely weren't normal. <laughs> I think, um I never really had problems finding my path. We, my family came to this country in 1957 and we were immediately involved in the life of anthroposophy and that just, you could say, structured my future life and continues to structure it. So there was never an issue. Were you also in a Waldorf school? No. no. There were very few Waldorf schools in the 50s in this mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. I, the reason I came to Spring Valley was my, my wife, since deceased, became a eurythmist here and was, became connected to the fellowship community to help. And there was a medical practice there with uh, Dr. Paul Scharf. Oh, yes. Who started the community. Mm -hmm. And so he and I agreed to that I joined the practice and the community. And that was in 1978. And since then, I've been involved with the life of the community. Mm -hmm. I'm a physician there. I am involved and was more involved with Mercury Press, publication work, garden work, care work, all kinds of things. And, and nothing in your uh, childhood um, sort of let you know that you might have to be a physician? No, I always, ever since seventh grade, I wanted to be a physician. Ah, so in I other words, wanted to emulate Albert Schweitzer because I had thoughts of traveling a lot. Ah. That never happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do travel to New York, I know that. Well, I do that, but uh, the travel, you could say, is more an, an inner travel. Inner travel. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about how, I mean, because I know because I've taken courses with you, that, um, I mean, I, to me, it feels like a passion that you have this connection to embryology. Can well, you that's maybe, one, one can, passion. Can you maybe uh, go a little bit into the different, the different disciplines that you really like to explore? Well, I love music. <laughs> you love music, all but, right. Um, and then you could say next would be epistemology. Okay. Which is how do we know things and what's the path of knowledge which really is a path of anthroposophy. Yeah. Of coming uh, closer and closer to the wisdom of the human being. Yeah. So that one can really evolve the, the, the true and the full human being. And there I'm just, I'm very, very actually interested besides embryology much more so really in early childhood and in, ch in education. And so I'm very involved with the Waldorf schools. I'm the school doctor here at Green Meadow. Mm -hmm. And that really interests me mm -hmm. because it's uh, a very constructive working together of teacher and of physician to understand the needs of, ch of growing children. And that's really interests me. Mm -hmm. And then at the other end of life, the elderly interests me. How, yeah. it, how can an elderly person really lead a constructive, fulfilling life at the end of life so that they continue to grow? It sort of makes me think of Ruth Push. 
Yeah, Ruth Bush was active right till the day she died, more or less. You know? tell, tell the story about how she, uh, because she never really um, had any trouble bursting into your office. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 do you mean? Well, uh, uh, when uh, at her eulogy, you told the story about uh, that uh, you you were with a patient or something like that, and she was just so fired up because she was just going to publish a book or something. Mm. Yeah. yeah, she just walked right in. Walk right in this, and so. do what she had to do, and then she left again. Yeah. <laughs> and I have uh, actually an interesting story. I uh, was given her m book of meditations. Uh, after she died, and so I tell people I go to to bed with Ruth Push every night. Oh, how do you because like Because I continue to use her book. So maybe you can uh, make the connection from Ruth Push to the mystery dramas, because there's a lot of history there. I'm pretty sure that you know about. Well, she and Hans Push worked, you know, intensely in trying to bring about the mystery dramas. There were, of course, many other people involved. Peter Menneker in the early days was involved. Um, quite a few other people, and um, she and and I and, and Mercury Press worked actually together to bring about new translations of the mystery drama. Mm -hmm. And she and she and Hans really involved the whole community yeah. in in the in the working up the the different mystery dramas. There you go. So. What about your interest in music? How does that play out? I don't know. I just love music. I play uh, violin and viola and piano. Uh -huh. Not very good. I just, I'm an amateur. But, but you're but enjoying I love, it. I love music. Yeah. yeah. In other words, before you go to bed, do you play the piano like me? Mostly. Mostly <laughs> every day, at least one piece by Bach. Yeah. So if, if you had to say something to young people that are trying to find their destiny, what would you say? What I would say is where, where is there a need? Can you fulfill that need? And how can you maximize your giving? Uh -huh. And then to find places where you can work together out of love for the work rather than out of what you, what you get for it. Yeah. And so in I, other words, you haven't really become a millionaire in the process of being a doctor. No, no. There is uh, Paul Scharf, my colleague, said you have to give up a million dollars for a penny of anthroposophy. Well, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. But uh, in the community, fellowship community, the medical practice is exceedingly essential for the economic life because all the income from the practice goes to the community and mm -hmm. then to support the elderly. And so I would, another thing I would say would be to really search for a different way of working with money. Yeah, yeah. That it's not self-directed, but that it is community-directed to make things possible that could not be made possible. Otherwise. If one's soul was, uh, was geared to make as much as possible for oneself. And how do you manage, uh, you know, people always talk about security. So how, how do you manage um, each and every individual's security? Well, people do have an, an income, a stipend, you know, minimal stipend, mm -hmm. but they have savings. Then uh, there's a contribution in the community to co-workers of an IRA uh, every year. Mm -hmm. And then we have a fund, a co-worker support fund when you get old, that if you need support, you get support mm -hmm. from that fund. Mm -hmm. And as you work in the community, you also build up a certain uh, equity, mm -hmm. which then permits you to live in the community. Mm -hmm. So we, we really try to take care of everybody in the best possible way. Right. And it seems to work, because you've been doing it for a long time. Uh, for over 46 years. Um, it's always a challenge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um, we strive to make it work. And we need more people who want to work that way. That's the, always that's, the issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, that actually live in the community and are co-workers. Yes. Mm -hmm. You always look for people to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you can just, uh, to round it off, how did you, in other words, you saw some part of the Mr. Play this morning. Um, how, does, how does that sit with you just now? You mean 
the mystery dramas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in one of the introductions, I think Barbara, um, Barbara Reynolds said that people come to her and say, well, that's all about me. And I, that's the experience, really, uh -huh. that these mystery dramas, all four of them, really are about oneself in relationship to other human beings. Yeah. And I, I can see the mystery dramas really as an answer to all of our social and interpersonal difficulties, even so far as they also give a, a possibility of a direction. Uh -huh. And really enhancing one's wisdom of life and wisdom of the human being. So you might almost say Rudolf Steiner gave this to point out what the challenges are in living and where there are potential solutions and if there aren't, how to bear the problems. And uh, of course, this last play, The Soul's Awakening, is about uh, a, a furniture factory right. that actually didn't happen then. Uh, I mean, somehow the well, people the, that the wanted to... The further development. The further development. Yeah. But uh, I mean, as you can see, I mean, you have a fellowship that has arisen out of Yes, but I mean, the, the same kind of issues that you see in the mystery dramas you see in a community like the Fellowship. Right. Very similar. Yeah, yeah. So in other words, it's a life drama. It's a life drama. There we go. Yeah. Well, I really do thank you, Gerald. <laughs> okay. I'm glad that you took a few minutes to talk to us. Okay, thanks. Yeah.